Now that we have a clear overview of Elementor's interface and understand the main building blocks, let's briefly check out the home page so we can get an idea on how to use them to create this page. As you can see, the header and the footer together take up 25VH, leaving us 75VH for the page, so that all three parts together add up to 100VH, so 100% of the viewport height. This way, it will all fit in perfectly. The content width for all parts are aligned as well, giving it this organized and professional look. Let's go back to the editor and see how it's done. Let's first add a section with two columns. Like you saw before, the content width is the same for the header, the footer, and pretty much every page across our website. So instead of setting it manually every time, we can set it as the default content width everywhere across the site. To do that, go to Site Settings, and in Layout, set the default content width over here. Set it to 1350 pixels. This value is now the default width for every new page, post, and template we create. Hit the Update button and go back to the editor. Great, the content width is updated correctly. Like you saw before, the minimum height of the page needs to be 75VH. So let's set that over here. Next, set the column position to stretch so it takes up the entire section's height. This way we can control what we add and how we position it more precisely without having to use unnecessary padding, margin or spacing. Now go to Widgets and drag the Heading widget into the left column. Say something that will engage the visitors, something simple, funny or simply a greeting. I'm going to type Hi, I am Nick. Then in Style, we'll leave the default primary color we set earlier in Globals. And for Typography, I'm going to use the Reclama script font from Adobe's Typekit service. Yeah, you heard that right. It's an Adobe font. Elementor Pro seamlessly integrates with your Adobe Fonts Typekit account, giving you instant access to all of your Adobe fonts within the editor. Let's open the Finder and type Integrations. Hold down Command or Control so it opens in a new tab. Scroll down to Adobe Fonts and simply paste your project ID over here. Then click Get Project ID. Be patient because after adding your project ID, it might take several minutes for Adobe to update their CDN network and place your fonts into Elementor. When it's ready, hit Save Changes and back in the editor, let's save the page as a draft before refreshing it. Now back in the heading widget, click Typography. And in Family, you'll see that Elementor has added your Adobe fonts to the list. We will use this font more across the site. So let's go to our global font settings via the shortcut and set this Adobe font for the primary headline. Set the size to 65 pixels and weight to 600 so it stands out nicely. Also set the letter spacing to 1. Next we will add a description. So drag in the text editor widget and add your text. Then in style, we'll leave the default text color and typography we set earlier in globals. Now, in order to create some space between the text and the image we'll add in the column on the right, go to advanced and unlink the padding. Then add 100 pixels on the right. Next, we are going to add a button that navigates visitors to the project's archive page. So in widgets, find the button and drag it under the text editor widget. Change the text to portfolio and link it by typing the name of the page here. Now to save some more time, we'll style the button the same as the contact button in the header. Simply hover your mouse over the header and click to edit this side part. But before we do so, let's publish the page. Next, right click on the contact button and choose copy. Then click to edit the page and right click the button. Lastly, choose Paste Style. Great, as simple as that. Next, let's select the left column to enter its settings and set the vertical align to middle. Almost there. For the right column, go to Widgets and search for and drag in the Slides widget. In Content, click on Item 1 and in the Background tab, clear the color. Then select Add Image. Next, in the Content tab, 
Delete the title, description and the button text. Then delete the two remaining items and duplicate the first one twice. So the changes we made are applied already. Next, add images to both items. Now let's set the height to 70VH and in the slider options drop down, we'll set the navigation to none, pause on hover and interaction to no, autoplay speed to 2000 milliseconds so the image changes every 2 seconds, transition to fade and lastly set the transition speed to 1000 milliseconds so the fade takes a second, giving it this cool transition effect. And that's it, our home page is done. Let's hide the panel to preview. Looks great. Now let's set the site's home page to this one. In the dashboard, go to settings and in reading, change the home page displays to a static page and then select the home page to set it. Don't forget to hit save changes. Next up, you'll see how to use the responsive modes to tweak your designs for mobile devices. So stay tuned.